This video will look at analysing film posters, particularly with the 2011 GCSE Media Studies exam in mind, which this year focuses on the action-adventure genre. You may be required to analyse a poster, or even create one of your own for the genre as part of the practical element of the exam. A poster is a form of advertising, and it's important to always remember that its job is to sell you a product. In the case of film posters, this product is a cinema ticket. They will therefore always be carefully designed to persuade and tempt the audience to go and see the film. A good place to start is with poster conventions, as these are the normal ingredients of something, or the informal rules which are normally followed in a form of media. We'll look at these by examining this poster for The Fugitive, starring Harrison Ford. The film title is always prominent on the poster, and in the last few years the tendency has been for this to be towards the bottom of the poster. The text is stylized and designed to reflect the film genre. In this case it is angled and italicised to suggest action, movement and suspense. Actors' names are usually displayed at the top of a poster. Here Harrison Ford's name is directly connected with the character of the fugitive in the middle of the poster. When this film was released, Ford was extremely popular and his name alone guaranteed a lot of ticket sales. The main image shows the hero of the film, Ford, running alongside what looks like a speeding train. He is hunched over and looking to the side with determination and tension on his face. Because of the title, this character is clearly on the run and is being pursued. His hair is scruffy and he is wearing informal clothes. This connotes someone who has not been home, slept or washed for some time. Most film posters carry a tagline or slogan which gives clues to the audience about the story they will be told. This story is called a narrative. The tagline uses just a few words and phrases to tease the audience with the film they will see. Here it says, a murdered wife, a one-armed man, an obsessed detective. The chase begins. The tagline raises questions in the mind of the audience, such as, why has someone only got one arm? Who murdered the wife? Is this the reason Ford's character is on the run? It also gives clues about the type of action-adventure film we will see. In this case, it's a thriller because of the mention of the obsessed detective in pursuit of a villain and the reference to a chase. Chase scenes often feature in thrillers. This poster contains two more conventions. A release date, which makes the audience anticipate the film, and the list of cast and crew. This allows the audience to see who else is in the film and also who directed it. More well-informed audiences may make decisions on whether to see the film or not based on this information. If they like other films by the same director, they are more likely to want to see this one. There are two final conventions which often appear on posters. This poster for Shoot 'em Up shows the remarks and reviews of expert witnesses. These are usually from newspapers, magazines and film critics. Designers will pick the best comments and sometimes add the publication's star rating to sell the quality of the film to the audience. Lastly, this poster also shows a certificate to inform the audience if there are any censorship restrictions on who can see the film. This also gives clues as to the film's content in terms of violent or sexual scenes and language. The audience can also use this information to decide if it is a film they want to see or not. Now that we've covered conventions, let's look in a bit more detail at some of the media terminology you can use to describe posters and evaluate your own designs. If we stick with the shoot 'em up poster for a moment, we can try to establish its genre. Genre refers to the type of film. This one is clearly an action film rather than an action adventure. The title of the film and the number of guns on the poster, along with the expert witness quote which says 100 miles an hour blast, all connote a pure action film. The next two terms are audience and demographic. The poster is a type of media text, and we all read media text when we look at them, making us the audience. So audience refers to anyone looking at the poster, making them a potential customer. Demographic means the section of this audience which the film is specifically aimed at. It is a cross-section of society, and may be split up by gender, age range, hobbies or interests, nationality, sexuality, and any other number of variables. This poster is targeted roughly at males aged 15 to 30, because it features guns, action, and the picture of Monica Bellucci suggesting a sexy female character. This group of people is most likely to want to watch this sort of film. Connotation is one of the most important terms in media studies, and refers to what words, images and colours suggest or make the audience think about. Its sister term is denotation, and this refers to meaning at a much more basic level. This poster of National Treasure denotes a pyramid shape near the title of the film. However, the connotation of this is exotic locations, ancient artefacts and treasure, because this is what the audience thinks about when we see a pyramid. Two more useful terms when we talk about characters in films are protagonist and antagonist. Typically, a protagonist is the hero or the good guy, and the film will focus on the protagonist during the story, like Robin Hood for example. The story will probably be told from their point of view. The antagonist is usually a villain or a bad guy, but actually refers to any character who gets in the way of the protagonist achieving their goals, like Arnie's Terminator character from the first film in that series. 
In stories, the antagonist creates conflict, tension and excitement. Sometimes posters intentionally confuse the audience about protagonist and antagonist, like in this example for Spider-Man 3. This poster connotes some sort of inner conflict within Spider-Man about whether he is a hero or a villain through his reflection in the glass. We've touched on the next term already, narrative, which means the story. All media texts tell some sort of story to interest the audience. Some narratives are more obvious than others. This poster for Die Hard features a tagline which makes sure its audience understands the narrative because it is original and sounds exciting. Representation is a tricky media term to understand, but if we pronounce it representation, it becomes easier. It means the way the world is presented in a media text and how accurately it re reproduces it. The Die Hard poster represents Los Angeles in a couple of different ways. First, the poster connotes crime and violence, which is accurate, but it is also representing LA as a romantic and beautiful place because of the sunset in the background. Representation can refer to anything about the world we live in, including places and people. Stereotype is another important media term. Stereotypes are usually negative because they generalise people and make the audience think certain types of people are the same. For example, it would be stereotypical to say that all Americans are fat or that all blonde women are unintelligent. The media has a habit of using stereotypes for comedic effect, such as in this poster for the comedy Tropic Thunder. This poster stereotypes all American soldiers as crazy, trigger-happy meatheads. A final term to get used to is Unique Selling Point, or USP for short. This refers to a feature in a media text which makes it stand out or makes it different from other similar texts. This poster for Avatar uses the blue Navi alien as a USP. Other Avatar marketing focuses on the large yellow eye of the alien to make the audience think there is something unique and different about this story. Sometimes, posters can break with convention to make themselves more appealing. When media texts do this, we say they are unconventional. Here are some examples. This poster for The Truman Show dropped many of the conventions you would normally expect to see and focused on the main image of Jim Carrey's character, which is made up of hundreds of tiny images from the film itself. The True Grit poster did not use a main image and instead copied the style of a Wild West Wanted poster to give clues about its genre and content. The Social Network poster is unconventional because it contains very little information and even covers up the main image with a huge tagline. The title of the film itself is very small on the right hand side. This teaser poster for The Matrix again breaks with convention because it gives very little information. Instead, it uses the Matrix code image to get the audience thinking and to raise questions in their mind. It also gives them the year of the film's release to create anticipation. We'll finish up with a poster analysis for the Nick Cage action-adventure film National Treasure. Focus on the media terminology and how it's used to describe how the poster works. The image of Nicolas Cage's character seems focused on something out of the frame. His body language makes him seem like he is searching or exploring. He is a modern day adventurer due to his clothing and watch. Cage's name will draw in the audience because he is popular. The sepia tones of the poster remind the audience of Indiana Jones posters. Perhaps we can expect a similar kind of story. He is shrouded in shadow which connotes mystery and the light behind him suggests a discovery or revelation. The audience wants to know what he is carrying. The skulls and fire connote danger and an adventurous location. The title of the film, written in beveled stone, connotes age and history. The word treasure in the title gives us clues about what he is searching for. What kind of treasure is it? National treasure links to the background image which Americans in particular may recognise as the Declaration of Independence from the year 1776, which is written in Roman numerals at the bottom of the pyramid. This mysterious symbol can be found on American banknotes along with the Eye of the Illuminati. All of these refer to a historical code which is also mentioned in the tagline. The tagline suggests a stereotypical hero scenario where he must accomplish something dangerous and possibly illegal. He will find himself in threatening situations which give the audience suspense and action. A code must be broken. This connotes puzzles to solve and mysteries to crack. The producer's track record of Pirates of the Caribbean is displayed at the top. The audience will associate the theme of pirates with this film. Adventure, action, mystery, exploration, history. The mention of pirates, a huge box office hit, adds incentive for the audience to see this film as well. The poster also follows conventions by displaying the cast and crew and the release date of the film. The film is aimed at a predominantly male demographic of teenagers and young adults. That concludes this commentary on film posters. As usual, thanks very much for tuning in. Please check our channel for more videos on English and media studies. Bye for now.